Hello, and welcome back to the LOC application how-to video series. In this video, you'll learn how to complete a significant change of condition LOC. This type of LOC will be used for two groups of individuals. First, individuals who have undergone a significant change in their level of care. Second, individuals who are currently enrolled on a waiver and need to have their LOC information entered into the LOC application for the first time. We'll give more detail on that process a little later in this video. For now, let's take a look at how to get started when completing a significant change of condition LOC. To begin, start from the home page of the LOC application. Then, move your mouse over the area that says IDS. A menu will then appear, and you'll see a number of tiles all of which will take you to a different area of the application. In this example, we'll select Individuals. This page shows you a list of all the active individuals in your county. To find the specific person you are working with, use the search bar on the right side of the screen. Once you've typed the person's last name, hit Enter, and your search results will be displayed like this. Next, click on the name of the person you are working with. In this example, we're working with a made-up person named Cherry Pie. And no, we did not pick this name. As we learned in the last video for LOC date change, it's important to let this page load fully. You'll know this is complete when you see a yellow bar appear at the bottom of the page. The next step is to move your mouse onto the downward facing arrow that is next to the name of the person you work with. A menu will then appear, and you'll see a number of tiles, all of which will take you to a different area of the application. In this example, we'll select Eligibility Management. You'll be taken to a familiar screen, although you'll note that the header now indicates Eligibility Management so we know we're in the right place. Something else to note, the LOC application is set up for all 88 counties, some of which use it differently than we do here in Cuyahoga County. For instance, DODD has indicated that the LOC application may be used to determine county board eligibility. This is the reason LOC is housed in the eligibility management tile. However, Despite the fact that the LOC application may be used for this function, we will not be using it in that capacity. Nonetheless, we still get to the significant change of condition LOC through that specific tile. Just like with the LOC date change we completed earlier, the next step is to click the Add New button. A new window will then open that looks like this. Just like with other pages within the application, Make sure you allow it to load fully before attempting to click or type on a field. To make things a little easier to see, I'll maximize this window. The first thing to notice on this screen is that there are three tabs near the top of the screen. Each tab contains different fields, and the tabs need to be completed in sequential order. However, to complete a significant change in condition LOC from beginning to end, we only need to work within these first two tabs. Since we are in the first tab, that tab is highlighted in a yellowish color. The next thing to notice on this screen is the pre-populated demographic information on the right side of the screen. These data pull from the person's record in IDS and are not able to be edited from this screen. If a change is needed to any of this information, you'll need to complete a Consumer Core Information Update form in OnBase. You'll notice there are also a number of other fields that are blank, but you won't need to fill out any of these. However, there are five fields you must fill out on this tab. All of them are marked with a red asterisk. The first is Assessment Reason. In this example, we are completing a significant change of condition LOC for a person already enrolled on a waiver. 
DODD has informed all county boards that significant change of condition LOCs must be completed for all individuals already enrolled on waivers over the next three years. They have released a schedule by which this work is to be completed, and it is tied to the person's current LOC date. You'll get more information about this outside of this video, but the schedule looks like this. Another important note about this. You are able to submit a significant change of condition LOC for an individual currently enrolled on a waiver before their scheduled time arrives. However, the significant change of condition LOC must be submitted by the date above, according to the individual's current LOC date. So, if you have the time, you can get this step over with and not have to worry about it moving forward. So, back to our example. We need to select an assessment reason. Because we're doing this for a person already enrolled on a waiver, we'll select waiver. This is also what you would select if you were completing the assessment for someone enrolling on a waiver. Currently in Cuyahoga County, we will never select county board eligibility in this field. Next, in the request type field, select change of condition. Then in the assigned evaluator field, click on the magnifying glass icon to open a drop down menu. Your username should be listed here, but if it's not, click on Look Up More Records where you can search for your information. In this case, my username is here, so I simply click on it to make the selection. Next, in the Copy LOC field, select Create New LOC. Next, select an assessment date by using the calendar. This is the date you met with the individual to gather the information for the assessment and is not necessarily the date you are working within the application. However, these dates could be the same. This completes all of the required form fields on this tab. However, before we can move to the next tab, there is one more important step. When you scroll down to the bottom of the window, you'll see a window within a window that is labeled SharePoint. This is the area where you can upload supporting documentation. In this example, we are completing a significant change of condition LOC for an individual already enrolled on a waiver. So we'll need to upload either a medical or psych eval that was used at the time of enrollment. It doesn't matter how old the eval is, as long as the diagnosis it indicates is still valid. If these aren't available, we'll need to obtain an updated eval as well as a clinician verification form to complete this process. Something to note, for significant change of condition LOCs being completed for individuals currently enrolled on a waiver as a part of the three-year schedule released by DODD, either a medical or psych eval is required. However, the document chosen must support the person's primary diagnosis. For example, if a person is diagnosed with Down syndrome and the psych eval mentions this but the medical eval does not, submit the psych eval. For all other significant change of condition LOCs and initial LOCs submitted 7115 and after, a DODD clinician verification form, also known as CVF, and either a medical or a psych eval is required. Luckily, in this example, we do have the psych eval used at the time of enrollment, so we can move forward. To begin the upload process, click New Document. A progress window will pop up, followed by an Upload dialog box. Click Browse and then select the appropriate document from your computer. One important note, you'll be able to see the file name and path here. If everything looks correct, click OK. You'll see another progress window and then you'll see a window that looks like this. You need to click your mouse somewhere in the white space of this window and then you'll see a window with more fields pop up. At the top of this window, it will display the name of the document you have uploaded. 
The system will automatically populate the file name of the document, so if it is something that doesn't identify what the document is, you'll want to change this to something that makes sense, such as psychological evaluation or medical evaluation. There are two other fields you must complete in this window. In the section drop-down, select LOC. Then, in the category drop-down, select LOC, waiver. Lastly, there is one other field that you need to review and determine whether or not it is applicable to the document you are uploading. The primary verification checkbox is required to be selected for at least one of the supporting documents you upload. Primary verification means that this particular document is the primary document which supports the person's diagnosis. After you check off this box, verify that the rest of the information you've entered is correct, and then click Save. You'll then be able to see the document you uploaded listed in the SharePoint window. Because we also have a medical evaluation, we'll upload that as well. You'll follow the same process here, although you won't need to check off the primary verification box. Once you click Save, you'll be able to see both of the documents you uploaded. If you wanted to view either of the documents, you could double-click on the document name to open it. One last step before you're able to move on to the next tab. You'll notice that this area of the screen appeared after you uploaded documents. If you don't see this area, click on the yellow tab and then the area will appear. Next, find the primary verification field and click once on the text that says no. The text will then change to say yes and you'll also see a checkbox appear. This is a required step that tells the LOC application one more time that yes, you have in fact uploaded a primary verification document. At this point, click Save. If you don't save, you won't be able to move on to the next tab. To move to the next tab, click on the Next Stage button. You'll see a small window appear, then click on Create. A new screen will appear, and at the top it will say New LOC. Be sure to let the page fully load before attempting to click on anything. When the page loads fully, you'll see lock icons next to several of the fields, and the Waiver Type field will open a drop-down menu. Select the correct Waiver Type. The screen you see here is the Significant Change of Condition LOC and contains all of the assessment questions you learned about in the online LOC modules offered by DODD. Because there are many questions on this screen, and because you've already had in-depth training on them via DODD's online modules, we won't spend much time going through each of them in detail. However, there are a couple of tricky parts that we'll walk you through. The first important note about this screen. All fields are required, even if they don't have a red asterisk. It is recommended that you fill out this screen from top to bottom so that you don't miss anything. DODD has also created a paper version of this assessment that you can use in the field and then return to your office to complete within the LOC application. The questions in the paper version are in the same order as in the LOC application and a blank copy can be found on Infonet. Once you have filled out the top part of the screen, you'll arrive at a section called Informant Information. This is also a required field, although that may not be clear to you just from looking at it. To enter data in this field, first click Save at the top of the screen. Don't click Save and Close, because then you'll close your window. After you've clicked Save, the screen will reload and you'll see that there is a new option at the top of the screen, Complete. Do not click Complete until you are entirely finished with the assessment tool. As soon as you click Complete, the entire screen becomes read-only and you can't edit anything. If this happens by accident, you can go back to the Eligibility Management screen and insert a new Significant Change of Condition Level of Care 
but save yourself some frustration and avoid clicking this button until you are absolutely certain you're finished. Now that the page has reloaded, you'll also see a small plus button on the right side of the screen in the Informant Information section. Click on this button and a new window will open. Enter the informant's information in this window, then click Save and Close. When this is done, you'll see the information you entered listed under the Informant Information area. Now you're ready to continue with the assessment and complete all fields. We'll fast forward through this part because there isn't anything special you need to do other than complete all of the fields. Most fields are drop-down menus, although some require you to enter text. If you are selecting from a drop-down menu where the text isn't fully visible, you can hold your mouse over one of the menu options like this and it will display the full text. When you get to the bottom of the screen, you'll see a header that says LOC Notes. You don't need to do anything here, but this lets you know you're at the end of the assessment tool. Scroll back up to the top of the screen and verify that all the information you entered is correct. If everything looks correct, click Complete. As we mentioned earlier, once you click Complete, the whole screen becomes read-only. You'll see a pop-up that alerts you to this fact, and if you're ready to move ahead, click OK. You'll then see another pop-up that tells you this will take a few moments. Click OK again. The screen will reload, and you'll see that on the left side of the screen, the LOC status field now indicates complete. However, you're not done. As you scroll down the screen, you'll notice that each section has a score. If you scroll down further, you'll see a summary of the scores from all the areas of the LOC assessment. Scrolling down even further, you'll see a total score, which will tell you the total number of substantial functional limitations, as well as a determination about whether or not the individual meets level of care. This information populates automatically based on the answers you provided throughout the assessment. Below total score, you'll see a header for attestation slash recommendation. This section contains one of the final steps you'll need to complete the Significant Change of Condition LOC. Double-click somewhere on this line item to open a new screen. You'll then see two checkboxes, each of which asks you to attest to a different thing. The first is that a 2399 has been submitted, and the second is that this individual has been submitted to PICT. You'll recall that in this example, we're submitting a significant change of condition, LOC, for an individual already enrolled on a waiver. Therefore, you may be asking yourself, why would we submit a 2399 and put this person on PICT if they are already enrolled? This is a very good question, and the answer is that because this system was designed for initial enrollments and significant changes of condition, these fields are present and required. However, DODD acknowledges that county boards will not actually submit 2399s or put individuals in PICT if they are already enrolled on a waiver. In short, this is a requirement of the LOC application that could not be changed. Given all of that, check off both boxes, then click Save and Close. The significant change of condition LOC screen will load. To complete the process, click Submit LOC. Then, click OK on the pop-up message. The significant change of condition LOC screen will reload, and you'll notice that the LOC status field now says Submitted. This lets you know that the significant change of condition LOC is submitted to DODD, and you're completely done. But wait, here's a bonus tip. Now that you know how to complete a significant change of condition LOC, you also know how to complete an initial LOC. The screens for initial LOC look and behave in the same exact way as the significant change of condition LOC. The only difference is in the request type field. You would select initial. 
everything else is exactly the same.